Hello everyone, my name is Dave DiBiazio, Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Precision Coding Companies. My name is Dick Buxton, I'm Director of Applications and Process Engineering. We're continuing a series on informative video blogs. Um, today's topic is mandrels. For those of you who are new, welcome. And for those of you who are visiting us again, welcome back. So Dick, I'd like to get into the, the question that I'm asked most um, with, with the mandrels is, why should I code it? What is the function of the coding on the mandrel? So in using a mandrel, often used for tipping, forming, welding, you're gonna need something that the material will release from the substrate. That makes sense. A lot of it is um, catheters that are forming over the mandrel, different things like that. It may have um, sticky properties themselves, so you need those release properties on the tooling. That does make sense. Um, from a coating perspective, there's several options. Um, what do you feel is the most durable coating that they can use for a mandrel? So in this case, I would recommend the aqueous material. Mm -hmm. It has a, a pretty high rock well of a 50 or a 58. Wow. So that means it'll be durable. Maybe they can reuse the mandrel. Yep, that's very good. And the release properties are excellent in aqueous coating, correct? Correct. But they do have options, right? There's yeah. a, a aqueous coating and they can also use a yeah. solvent coating? Solvent as well. Solvent mm -hmm. has a little bit less of a coefficient of friction, meaning it, it's, it won't release as easily as the aqueous. Got it. But it does have better bondability than the aqueous does? Correct. It yep. does. Yeah. And hardness is close? It's close. It does have a filler, so it's a little softer than the PTFE. Ah, that makes sense. Um, and, and the lubricity is very good on both? Within a couple of points, yes. Very good. Yeah, for, for the lubricity, um, often there's a factor of zero to one, and the lower the number, the more lubricious the product is. And because the PTFE components are so low, um, inherently, uh, the difference between the two, even if it's a few percentage points or up to 20, is still negligible as far as the release properties are concerned, correct? Can you coat the entire mandrel? We can. It's a little tricky, but uh, there are methods that we are able to complete from end to end a coated mandrel. Yeah, and, and you, it, it's a little bit more um, cost prohibitive because you have to you know, repeat the process. There's more correct? cycles to it, correct. Yeah, and um, when you coat the mandrels, you know, a lot of people ask about the fixturing. Is there, can you do rounded ends? Are there cost implications? Can you mask? Uh, we can mask. Uh, mm -hmm. Rounded ends almost always indicate that the, the mandrel has to be coated complete. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, very yes. good. But it's always preferable to have a whole point. Always is. Okay, and it's cost effective too as well. So how many times can you use this manual? Is it only once or can you get multiple uses? With some of the geometries, I could understand why a customer would want us to try to reuse. I mean, they're pretty expensive on the raw side. Mm -hmm. um, what we do is we look at a dimension after we go through our thermal cleansing and abrasion yes. and measure it prior to uh, applicating coating again to make sure that it's still within the standards of a new product would be. Got it. And, you know, you mentioned um, the measurement and the application. Um, how, how thin a layer of coating can you put onto, the, onto this product? <laughs> if I put a tenth of a PTFE on it and you've got a color, you're going to be wondering if I even coated it because <laughs> coating doesn't really start to show until about two tenths. But usually we go anywhere from a tenth up to two and a half, three tenths. Be a standard coating so thickness. the effect on the original diameter is minimal, but you get all the benefits of the PTFE coating. Correct. Uh, you mentioned a little earlier the raw product. Are there specific substrates that you'd recommend for, uh, for a mandrel? Uh, we do it all. 303, 304, 316, 174 pH. We'll do night and all. Very Anything good. It's out there. Very good because you do need the different properties depending on your application of the different substrates. And you know, um, you mentioned the coating thickness. Um, of course, that's always a concern because you're using these as tooling. So you want to make sure that they're round. There's not a lot of run out. Um, that you can you can coat to a tight tolerance. Um, how do we how do we maintain those those factors when we're doing the coating? So when using the robot, the robot actually coats segmentally around the diameter. So it, it's a precise application of the coating. Uh, very good. So so we do about ninety percent of our application is um, automation. Um, so that would lend itself well to what uh, Dick's referring to, being able to coat from all different angles. Um, can we provide the manual itself? Oh yes, we can. So that means we can we can produce we can provide the substrate and then do the coating and provide the end user a finished product. Correct. Great. Very good. Yeah, we we have uh, relationships with um, a lot of vendors that we work with. 
Um, we bring in everything from raw wire to mandrels and we can coat them. And in some cases, we even keep a Kanban inventory here so that we can provide the mandrel quickly to the customer um, uh, when they need it. Because often they don't know when after a second use or a third use or if it's set back for strip and recoat, uh, they need the product relatively quickly to keep their line running. We can have the product here, coat it, and send it to them complete. Well, thank you for taking the time with us today. Um, we hope we were informative and we help you with your next manual coding project.